Okay, welcome back for more Lower Decks. We've made it to the second week of season four. Last week we had the, the fun little two episode premiere with the Voyager centric episode that was a lo lovely little nostalgia trip. And of course, Moopsie. Moopsie. A lot of fun for the first two episodes. So I'm looking forward to, to episode three. We now have all four of our cast, our main Lower Deckers are now Lieutenant Junior Grades. So, I mean, I guess they aren't really Lower Deckers anymore. I mean, they don't have, they don't live on, in bunk beds anymore. They each have their own quarters. Actually, no. Rutherford and Mariner, nope, Rutherford and Boimler are now sharing a room. Uh, so maybe Mariner and Tendi are as well. I don't know, that would make sense. Uh, but things sort of wrapped up very nicely when, you know, they're all back together at the end of the last episode. So let's see, I'm assuming we're going to get new jobs for them, a bit more responsibilities, presumably, as they've been promoted. One can only hope, and they can uh, get an opportunity to shine a bit more instead of being uh, having all the shitty jobs dumped on them. But yeah, should be entertaining as always. Let's do it. Oh. Right into the title sequence. No, uh, no pre-titles. Interesting. I completely forgot to mention just then, by the way, that uh, we also have been getting those teasers of that weird new threat. People are, I guess, I see are theorizing that it's Peanut Hamper <laughs> and Badgie sort of combined into the ultimate threat, it would seem. They could just vaporize entire ships. I don't know if that's uh, if that's going to be the case. It would make sense, given the teaser we got there in the last season. But yeah, that's that's not going to be fun. I hope we finally get the destruction of Peanut Hamper once and for all. Badgie, I enjoy. Peanut Hamper just pisses me off now, so I'd be happy to see that... Uh, that little extra comp vaporized. <laughs> Federation World Corisonia, an artificial mega structure in a bespoke star system designed Whoa. by a long extinct alien species. That's sick. It's a ring that harnesses the power of the star. It's like a so it's like a Dyson sphere, but it's like a Dyson ring. That's pretty sick. Very, very cool. Thank you for making the trip on short notice, Captain. We're very concerned about Vexelon. Well, he's not trying to subjugate anyone, is he? I thought he was a friendly computer. He is. Uh-oh. The amount of freaking alien species in Star Trek that, that are ran, ran, that are run by supercomputers. It's this Landry shit all over again. It always goes wrong. And that one episode of TS where they were like the, the uh, that one um, tribe like the big dragon. I can't remember what episode that was. And they had the big like stone dragon head. They would like breathe fire or some shit. <laughs> I don't think I'm remembering that exactly, but. Please enjoy some iced tea. <laughs> oh. It's totally normal for a planetary operating system to need some maintenance every once in a while. No one's judging you. <sighs> Thank you. So it's not it's not like it's just their operating system, okay? It's not actually their their leader. Okay, good. Like it says, so it's benevolent. Ideally. Or at least it is now. Hopefully it doesn't something doesn't go wrong here, I'm sure it will. We needed to stop in and retrofit the power relay Starfleet installed during first contact anyway. I've got one of my lieutenants on that now. Rutherford? Probably? Because he's a lieutenant now. Oh no, Barmler. Have you completed your confidence boosting ritual? Oh, that's not what I was doing. I was just uh, running a last minute check of supplies. Has everyone tested their comms? Boimler to Delin. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've never even thought about that. It's feeding back with a. <laughs> that's that would yeah that would make sense. <laughs> oh gosh. <laughs> you have any questions, don't hesitate to come to me or provisional lieutenant junior grade Talyn, who's on site in case any science stuff happens. Everything that has ever occurred is science stuff. Well, look at Boimler being a commanding figure in charge of a team of ensigns. You love to see it. You love to see it. These look like the warp drives from Enterprise. The component pieces are unstable and could detonate at any moment. The retrofit must be conducted in precise order or the terminal will explode. Yeah, it looks like Talyn is maybe a bit more uh, appropriate for taking charge of this mission rather than you, Boimler. I don't know. Should have done your research. What if I told you we now have access to this? <gasps> the anomaly storage room? Yep. Oh. Why do they have Nomad? <laughs> I am Nomad. I am Nomad. Three Whoa, 
Adazoid gift box. Things creep me out. Not this fucking thing. Why? The Betazoid gift box. This freaking thing. This was in TNG season one with Loxana Troy and, the, and, and Lurch. Mr. Holmes. Home. It was, and it was Armin Shimmerman. That was, what a horrible thing that was. Challenges. Oh, yeah, with, like, the pastel triangles and the Why is it back? <laughs> and everybody's like, oh. Alan Murray, count to four. Alan Murray, then three more. I need you three to scan each and every one of these isolinear chips by hand. What? But there are thousands of them! Yeah. Or what I was saying about hopefully they get uh, more interesting responsibilities. Maybe not. Maybe they're going to miss being uh, instance, having more uh, unique things to do rather than monotonous scanning of different isolinear chips. On Orion, older pirates would haze new recruits by making them do worthless tasks like clean the door panels with their tongues! You think Dirk's hazing us? What's hazing? It's a prank dressed as like team building. Hazing the new lieutenants? I mean, I understand for ensigns, but you get hazed every time you get promoted. I don't think when you get promoted to commander, you get hazed by captains. Maybe a little bit, actually. Actually, Picard kind of did haze Riker initially in Encounter at Farpoint. Isn't it a little presumptuous of a first officer to second guess his captain's judgment? Operating systems out of date. That would explain it. When was my last update? Six million and seven years ago. <laughs> that was a good year. It last updated six million years ago. Wow, his iOS uh, system is way the hell out of date. He's like on iOS six million. <laughs> It'll be nice to get back to my old helpful self after 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 uh -oh. after 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 Update requires restart. <laughs> uh oh. The sky is falling. Chicken Little will have a field day right now. So it's it's screwed with the weather all over the ring, huh? So you have four subspawners in the corners that interface with the ion generator in the center, which self-stabilizes the reaction. If broken in the wrong order, the container will explode. So you have to be careful as you remove. Oh the gosh! Well, so, yeah, they're really being very delicate, Boiler. Just let them do it, Boiler. They're not going to blow it up. Oh gosh! <sighs> when are we going to get to do some of the mission? Look, we've scanned every chip. They're all fine. Hmm. Every chip? Even the second layer? <laughs> Fuck that. That's horrible. They're twice as hot. Okay, well, this, this guy has got to be screwing around. Lancelot the raccoons wreaking havoc. Oh gosh. Okay, okay, no big deal. Just a frozen progress bar and some crazy <laughs> Frozen progress bar. That's too real. <laughs> it crashed while updating. Fucked up the whole operating system. That's so typical. A lot of these ancient computers had a safe mode for debugging. Yeah, if I could just activate it. Uh, there. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it's nice seeing Freeman actually, I mean, she's not exactly fixing the problem, but she is troubleshooting it. She's not just uh, in the captain's chair making stupid choices for what's... <laughs> oh, Lord. Whoa, he's, so he's doing a... Gen he's, he's restarting Genesis. But it's not actually a planet, though. Like, why do they need all this... Like, they're just... They're just it's just fake. On, all of this is fake on a... Ring. Vexalon can force a restart if we 
reroute its primary power to your station. But the station's outdated. We have to get this done before the anaerobic bacteria is dispersed. No problem. All right, put everything back, Bormler, and enlist the use of your team instead of just having them stand by and watch and you doing it all. Got to do it quick. A volcano has appeared. So this is going to erupt. We're going to have magma in play, rolling towards them, flowing towards them. Oh, God. Why did you take the freaking Betazoid box? Just leave it there. Nobody wants it. He's going to, they're going to jump scare their commanding lieutenant with the Betazoid gift box. That would work for me. Those isolinear chips run some of the most important systems on the ship. Thank you so much for taking that on. I really appreciate it. Come on. No, now he's playing nice guy. He's still, I think he's still bullshitting. No, no, he's playing you. He's playing you. How familiar are you with the Wadi Chula game? We put one in. When I was a kid, I got trapped in one for a month. Come on. He's playing the, what is happening? I see. So he's saying he can't go near the anomaly room. All right, so now he's going to walk into the Bezoid gift box and have a panic attack. Great. That's great. I don't know. Is he, is he, is he playing them? I, I can't tell. Maybe that's, if he really is so scared, that could explain why he's being such a dick. <laughs> this is quite enough, Lieutenant. Yeah. There you go, Talyn. Override his orders. He's being stupid. <laughs> this is ridiculous. It's like, it really is Genesis. Yeah, this is this is a stupid. You have to take the risk. It's stupid. Your promotion was not random. I studied your records and mission logs before our departure. The commander was correct to promote. Yeah, so he thinks that he doesn't. He's no more deserving a lieutenant than they are. Well, he is. He, you've earned it. You've proven it. They're, they'll earn it one day too. They have to prove their worth, like you did over all those. Those few years. Give them a chance. Let them prove them. Prove themselves to you. We've worked together for years. I trust you. Big Murph, you're with me. We're unloading the transport. Taylor and Meredith, clam a terminal and get those power cylinders reattached. Nobody's exploding today. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> Nobody's exploding today. Oh, here you go. Tendy's going to scan them all. <laughs> Yeah, it really isn't that many. Come on, it wouldn't take that long to just you just tap it once. Come on. Oh Lord. <laughs> oh yep. Oh. Alamorain, count to four, Alamorain, then three more. Oh god. That I can't DS9. Earworm. <laughs> This is a way faster gift box than I've ever DNG. <laughs> faster motherfucker. <laughs> That's so good. He's memorized the whole thing. Of course he has. He's a DS9 fanboy like so many others. Fortunately, I'm not really. Haven't seen that much DS9, but I haven't seen that episode. I think it's a season one episode, isn't it? I should probably get back to my room. Right. Miggly Mill's coming over to help me sort through my trust issues. Oh, wait, don't you want to list some more stuff at me? We can meet up after. This has been fun. Damn, he seems like a nice guy. Now I, I feel bad now. At least they got that, that gift box out of their room, out of his room. Well, I guess it's not yet because they're stuck in the game. Told you that is a <laughs> go 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 get the fuck out of there. Where are we out of those cylinders? Complete. Complete. Securing my final plan. Taylor, Murph, assume the rotational stand. We are running out of time here. Everything is really gone to shit. I don't know how they haven't been destroyed yet. They gotta do a quick reboot of this system, otherwise they're in, not gonna make it. I need you to stop the planetary regenesis before we all Yes, of course. I'm so sorry. This is so embarrassing. Uh, give me a sec. There you go, Epsilon. He can save the... Uh-oh. Oh, shit. It's not... I thought everything was fixed. We're not quite... Come on, Epsilon. Stop the Regenesis.
This really is fucking nuts for your first uh, away team command. <laughs> this is fucking bad. <laughs> what? Boimler? No, he's not dead. No, no, he's not dead. He's not dead. Oh, the space koala. What the fuck? What the fuck is with that goddamn koala? <laughs> what the fuck? Omnipotent koala. Your mission was a success. Well done, Mr. Boimler. You never forget your first death. Only more and more dangerous missions from here on out. <laughs> never forget your first death. Yeah, everybody comes back at some point in Star Trek. In all science fiction, pretty much, really. But, you know, somehow Boimler returned. <laughs> sort of thing. I feel silly thinking a Starfleet officer would ever haze someone. Hmm, sorry I ever brought it up. Next time, we assume the best in people. Here, here. We know Starfleet officers haze people. We saw it in Strange New Worlds. <laughs> General Ortega, Cadet Uhura, welcome. <laughs> Dress uniform, huh? Grab a drink, I gotta deal with the ribs. Told him I was stuck oh. for a month. <laughs> yep, okay. He was hazing them. So this is, I guess this guy's gonna be a recurring character now. He's their, their, their new commanding figure. Kind of looks like Kelsey Grammer, <laughs> who was in Star Trek, briefly, in uh, Cause and Effect. Okay, well that was episode three of season four of Lower Decks. As expected, we saw <laughs> their new roles. The Lower Deckers' new roles as Lieutenant Junior Grades. Um, Boimler got the real raw end of the deal, uh, nearly dying on his first commanding away mission. He was in charge of a team of ensigns, but he had Talyn there to, to help him out because she was a big help for sure, reinforcing his confidence. Um, but the whole thing on the, the ring around the star, it's a very cool sort of Dyson Sphere. It's probably, there's probably a term for this one. Um, but I've never heard of it, but it, it reminds me of the Dyson Sphere, the idea of building this mega structure around a star that is powered by the star it's surrounding, and then people live on the surface of it, of the of the mega structure. Very cool, very Star Trek. Love it, that utopian thing. Uh, and we have the computer that runs everything, but for once is not a villainous computer. But as soon as Captain Freeman tries to update it, uh, it goes haywire and. <laughs> And regenesis happens on the surface of the megastructure. Basically, they reset everything to the primordial ooze. Volcanoes are, are rising from the ground. Lava is flying everywhere. The clouds crash down. Everything goes to shit. Um, but basically, it's, it's up to Freeman uh, to, to figure out how to reboot the system and, and um, Boimler to uh, fix the, the power supplies that need retrofitting. Um, and we got a fake out of Boimler's death at the end. Well, I guess he actually did die, um, and he saw the space koala that we, we've known about now for, I think, since the beginning of Lower Decks. Uh, that was even teasing the Strange New Worlds crossover. Um, it's this omnipotent creature that exists between realities, I guess, and uh, it, it was, it's always trippy as hell when it shows up. I don't know what its deal is. I don't think we ever will, honestly. I think that'll be an ongoing joke, which is fine, because it's a nice little thing. Um, but Boimler did die, but of course he came back, as is typical in most science fiction shows, and especially in Star Trek. Um, and and uh, Ransom had a funny line about, you never forget your first death. I thought that was good. But yeah, that was a very chaotic episode. A lot of fun. Pulling a TOS plot and sort of the TNG plots, merging them. Nice little combination into its own thing. And then the side plot with the other three Lower Deckers, with Tendi, um, Rutherford, and Mariner, with their new commanding officer, who's, uh, because I guess, I guess Ransom is not necessarily breathing down the back of, I mean, he is, you know, watching over Mariner, but he's, this new guy looks like animated Kelsey Grammer has sort of taken over for this episode and probably will stick around for a bit, but he's their immediate superior, he's a lieutenant, had them scanning all these isolated chips, but he was hazing them. We thought maybe he wasn't hazing them because uh, he had this whole spiel about how he played the Alamorain game from DS9. I don't know, I can't remember what it was called, the, what's, what's, the whatchamacallit. Um, and he was stuck in it for a month. He was a kid and he was traumatized. That was all bullshit just to, just to fuck with them, the lower deckers, to haze them. But uh, they believed him and they, you know, they had this whole thing. <laughs> Rutherford got stuck in the game. You know, Alamorain, one, two, four, count to four, Alamorain, then three more. Um, that's such an earworm, I tell you. Uh, but yeah, and then seeing the Betazoid gift box, which 
that thing haunted me since I first saw it. I think that episode was called Haven of TNG Season 1. I watched it for the first time last year. Um, and you can see my reaction for it on this channel. Uh, but yeah, that was that was a bizarre episode. And that thing, still, I still think about it sometimes. Because it was... And the fact that it was Armin Shimmerman too, just makes it even more iconic. I don't know if for, for better or for worse, honestly. It's so creepy. Uh, it's just a strange... It's just like, it's perfectly encapsulates TNG Season 1 and how bizarre that first season was. I tell you. Um, but it was nice to see it referenced here. And it was far more foul-mouthed here, <laughs> calling Rutherford a motherfucker. But that was funny as so. hell. This was a funny episode. Um, probably, I think I liked it better than the... Uh, than the last episode with Moopsy, even though that it's that birth the iconic Moopsy meme. Um, but the first episode with Voyager was obviously great. This had a lot of uh, references to obviously the whole anomaly anomalous room uh, that had the the gift box and Nomad from the TOS and uh, like, there's just a room of re the reference room they should call it. But yeah, I mean obviously I love that. That's the Lower Decks does best. But yeah, fun episode. Finally saw the well not finally but we did see the Lower Deckers. Um, Getting getting new position, getting new work in their their new positions. Boimler was challenged. His person his person was challenged, and his command ability was challenged. Or I guess he was tested really for the first time, um, and he proved himself to be a decent commander at the end and saved the lives of his team. And even though he risked his own and lost it, but he got it back in the end, luckily. Uh, and the other three, you know, I guess uh, maybe it was a sort of lesson about appreciating and respecting authority. I guess not that they necessarily had that problem, but. You know they were kind of trying to get back, at, you know, back, you know, get back at the their superior. But you know they realized they were doing the wrong thing, even though that he sort of played them. But it was all about command, and 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 um, for both plot lines it was about respecting authority and so on and so forth. So nice little uh, tying up there, and a very fun episode, solid episode all around. Hope you enjoyed. Let me know what you think in the comments. Get that discussion going as always. If you liked, go ahead and drop a like down below. If you enjoyed watching this. Subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see you in the next episode.